Good evening, everyone. My name is Nick Daniels, and today we are going to be talking about the fourth iteration in the One Night Ultimate series, which is One Night Ultimate Vampire. So as usual, we'll be showing you the cards, explaining what they do a little bit, and how to set up the game properly. Um, so without any further ado, let's get right into it, because this one is very complicated. Okay, so we've got the cards laid out here. So as you can see, again, we have another iteration of a, about a dozen or so, two dozen cards, um, or a dozen cards. And uh, you can see that we've got three teams here, uh, so that every time the iterations come out, there's usually a little twist with some of the cards. Now, of course, as natural, we'll go through each one of these and explain what their abilities are, how they play a, a role in the game, um, and the, the extra night phase that we're going to have, which is called Dusk, where now there's a Dusk phase and a Night phase, and how those two roles interact with each other. So let's quickly set up the game, and we'll get right into the explanation of these two teams. Okay, so we've got the game set up here, but again, we have all the cards face up. So keep in mind, all these cards are going to be face down. Um, to get an idea of it, we're just going to have them face up just for now, because this is a little bit more confusing, and it's easier to see them face up uh, rather than be face down. Now, again, you'll set up the app on your phone, and you'll select all the cards with the dramatic music that will follow with the Vampire Edition. Um, so the first card that's going to go here is the Copycat, and that will activate the Dusk phase. Copycat, wake up. So the Dusk phase is any of these little marks you'll see in front of everybody called the Mark of Clarity. Now, every player will default get one a Mark of Clarity. However, those marks of clarity get get switched with these marks onto the side here. Um, so hopefully you guys can see these well enough here, but we'll go through each one of them just in case. So the first thing the copycat will do, as you can see here, the copycat, uh, will, they will look at one of the three middle cards. Now, whatever that card is, they become that card. Now, this is a fantastic card um, if you have something to verify a middle card. If you have the Seer, the Apprentice Seer, something that can see the middle cards. However, in Vampire on its own, it is not as useful as you think, because no one can really argue what you saw or didn't see in the middle. Um, so it can be very difficult to play that role or add value to the game. Uh, but if the copycat sees a vampire in the middle, say they saw the Count, they would well wake up in the next card that is called, which is the vampire turn, and play the role of the vampire like a vampire would. So it can be on either team, and the role that the copycat saw sticks with the copycat where the copycat goes. So the copycat will be the very first card that goes, and then the vampires will wake up as normal. Vampires wake up. Um, so we have three vampires here, the Count, the Master, and a regular vampire. Now, the Count is the only one that actually gets an alternative ability to wake up and do something, but all three vampires together will be asked to make someone, give someone the mark of the vampire, and that will replace the player's mark. So we'll swap this out, for example, with Cupid here. Now, again, we're going to keep these face up in this explanation video because it's easier to explain, uh, but you would have that face down and swap them. So Cupid, in this example, would not have known yet that that mark is in place there. So when those three do that, any one of those vampires can do that, but all three will see it. They will close their eyes and point at the player that they voted or made the, with the mark of the vampire. Next, the count will open his eyes. Count wake up separately and move the mark of fear to any player now this cannot be a vampire for either one of these by the way so the mark of fear will go to any player we'll say the diseased will will go to here so the mark of fear will actually negate the player's night action but will not negate the player's dusk action so what are those two things? Well, again, we've mentioned quickly here that the Dusk action is anything with the marks and not anything to do with the cards. Now, the cards that have a Knight action that we'll be talking about are the, the cards that don't have an icon in the bottom right corner. Now, in this video, it might be hard to see, but in the bottom right corner of some of these cards, they have icons that are there. 
The cards that don't would be the copycat, but there they go first. Uh, the pickpocket, gremlin, and marksman. So in the base game of Vampire, it is only three cards it affects, but any card from any other edition is only a night roll, and they would lose the ability to do their night roll, and we'll get to how they know that in just a moment. Um, so after the vampires have gone, and they've done that, and the count has done that, again, they all close their eyes and point at the player that they created as a vampire. Renfield then wakes up. Renfield, wake up. Who works as now the minion and will play with the vampire team and win with the vampires, but they don't know who Renfield is. Renfield will then see who they're pointing to, so he knows who has been created as a vampire, and he knows who the vampires are because they're pointing at that player. So he will know all of them. Now, in no particular order from this point in, uh, but we'll try to keep it to the dusk order, um, Diseased... Diseased... Wake up! ...will go next, and Diseased moves the mark of the disease to a player on their left or right. Now... Why I'm saying Renfield is because Renfield also does move a mark, but Renfield only swaps the bat with himself and moves the mark of clarity off himself. So if the diseased now will move a mark to the player on the left or right, so the pickpocket or Renfield in this example, it would swap with the bat with Renfield. And we'll put that right over there. Now you might ask the importance of the bat, and quite honestly, it isn't too um, crazy to have the bat played there, but it will swap out the mark of clarity, and then his card can still be swapped out for a vampire or something of that matter, because there are cards that swap rules or marks. Um, but the diseased will make herself and someone to her left or right the diseased with her. And when they are diseased, both of those players, if voted out, Anyone who votes that player will lose the round. However, the vote will still count and that player or team will still be eliminated. So for example, if the diseased was on Renfield here, as it is now, and everyone voted Renfield except two players, uh, and those two players uh, were say on the, or the whole vampire team didn't vote for Renfield. Uh, and all the villagers did, and they thought they maybe take it. And maybe one of the vampires did. Maybe the Count voted for Renfield too. So the, the Master and the regular vampire did not vote for Renfield. All the players that voted for Renfield would be uh, would would lose, um, but the vote would still count, and Renfield would be eliminated. But that also means the Count would lose because the Count had voted for Renfield, who was diseased. Um, so the disease is not the most interesting card, but can be played almost like an immunity, like a safe card, like don't vote for me because I'm diseased. Next uh, will be Cupid. Cupid, wake up. So Cupid here moves the mark of love to two players. So we'll move it to the marksman and we're gonna move it to the copycat. So what that'll do is after the, the round will end, the two players that were in love will actually open their eyes and make eye contact with each other. Those two players will be tied to the same fate. So if one of them is eliminated, the other player will die, no matter what team they're on. Um, so they can very much bound the two players and bound those two teams, or they can bound the same team. Next is the instigator. Instigator, wake up. And the instigator moves the mark of the traitor so we're going to move that over to uh, the pickpocket here. Now the Mark of the Traitor uh, works out very interesting that the Mark of the Traitor makes it so that person can only win if one of their teammates dies. So if it moves to a vampire, let's say the regular vampire, he will only win if the other two vampires, or one of those, are killed off and they lose. That is the only way they can win. Uh, the Assassin. Assassin. Wake up. We'll talk about next. So the assassin gives someone the mark of the assassin, which we'll give to the count here. Now the mark of the assassin is very interesting and in the way that the assassin only wins if that player is killed and that specific player. However, once they do so, the apprentice assassin will then open their eyes. Apprentice assassin, wake up. It's the card here in the middle and will view the assassin. They will make eye contact 
If, the, if that happens, the apprentice assassin only wins if the assassin dies. And if there is no assassin, the apprentice assassin carries the role and does the assassin, marks the mark of the assassin, and only wins if they kill their mark. Uh, so it can be a very interesting way of having a player coming after you and trying to get you out. The pickpocket will take someone's mark and use their new mark, but I'm only mentioning that now because they, once all the marks are done and said for, they could take a mark that someone's already kind of looked at and done something with. Uh, and that also includes that they can also take the mark of the vampire or the mark of the assassin, and that means the assassin could be going after the wrong player. But we'll come back to him in just a moment. Um, so the last card we're going to talk about here in the dusk round is the priest. Priest, wake up. Now the priest gives out two of these marks of clarities to players and can neutralize one of the of, of the bad marks if you say didn't want to be a vampire or you didn't want to be in love and gives out the mark of clarity, which again negates any of the mark ability. Now at this point in the game, everyone will open their eyes and view their own mark. Everyone, wake up and secretly view your mark. Now when this happens, everyone will then close their eyes and whatever mark they saw, they will now play the mark. This is where the mark of love will open, the two people the love mark will open their eyes. If, if you are in love, wake up and look for your love interest. Of course, if there's only one person with the mark of love, they just play normally. Um, and if you view the mark, uh, again, of fear, you do not do a night action if you have one. So as mentioned before, the pickpocket... Pickpocket, wake up. ...is a night action, and will take a mark and view that mark. So we could view a mark of clarity and swap their own mark. Now, they wouldn't have known what mark they have, uh, but they would be able to, they would only have seen it at that beginning. So the, the pickpocket is very useful that they will have some information on what their mark is and be able to hopefully get rid of that mark. The gremlin... Gremlin, wake up. It works like the troublemaker, where they can swap two players' cards or two players' marks, but not... You can only do one or the other. You have to pick which one it is, and you cannot do both. Um, usually I find the marks are a little less effective, but to each their own. And the final one here is the marksman. Marksman, wake up. And the marksman can view one player's mark, or, uh, or as well, is another player's card, but not the same of each. You can't view one player's mark and the same player's card. It has to be a separate player for each. Um, so that kind of gone through very quickly, again, keeping it all face up there just so you guys can see exactly what's going on. I know that one's a very more difficult one and has the two layers, which makes it way more complicated. Now, in some situations, uh, which we might do a bonus video here, um, you can actually play all of the additions together and it gets very complicated. But if we're going to do that, that's gonna be another video. So thank you so much for watching everybody. Hopefully it's not too dark there. Unfortunately, I'm losing a lot of, I'm losing my natural light here. So hopefully this video hasn't darkened off. But if it does, we will brighten it up for you. Thank you so much for watching everybody. And if you have any questions, you feel free to message me and, uh, or see me at the game table in the boardroom cafe and I'll take you down. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Peace. Thanks for watching, you pencil pushers. If you guys want to check out my Instagram here, I've just got it in the background. It's Nick Daniels Photography with an underscore in between each word where I uh, post every day. That's a lie. Thanks for watching. Peace.